and welcome to my follow-up slash accountability video for a video I did several months ago about my upcoming trip to Prince Edward Island and my sewing plans for that project. If you haven't already watched that video, it's probably a good idea to go check it out just if you want to know what in the heck I'm talking about because I'm not really going to go over so much what I planned, but I'm also just going to talk about what I wore in Prince Edward Island, so if you just want to see costumes, continue watching. Now if you're interested in more of an overview of this trip and just some pretty scenery and costumes and what other people are wearing, then you can watch that right here. It's already done and up on my channel. And I'm also planning a more in-depth video that's like kind of a Q&A about what we did on our trip and how we planned it and how we decided what to do. And depending on when you're watching that, that is either already on my channel and I will leave a link down below or it's coming soon. So we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and spoil this video and let you know that I failed pretty miserably on what my original plans were. I had three big projects plus one stretch goal, who <laughs> was I'm kidding, and a ton of accessories that I never even started. So, you know, this is not going to be a list of the 10 things that I made for my trip to Prince Edward Island, but we'll just continue on with that. And I do have two really good excuses for why I was not as uh, productive as I might have otherwise been. The first one is that we moved this summer. <laughs> so back in March when I was planning out my sewing for the next few months, I did not know that we were going to be moving, but circumstances coalesced in our favor and we ended up moving out of our house. Um, so I happily did not have to move my studio, thank goodness, that would have been total chaos. Um, but we are living in a new place now. So, you know, that kind of threw me for a loop in June when we had a surprise move. And the second excuse is for a much more fun reason, and that is that I went to Europe for two weeks. Uh, I mean, right? <laughs> I also was not expecting to go on that trip uh, when I made my original plans, but when I got invited, I absolutely could not resist the opportunity to spend two weeks in France and Germany all ending in an amazing 1790s three-day house party in an honest-to-God French chateau. It was amazing, and what a great excuse, right? <laughs> and I also made a secret project because of that trip, which I haven't talked about at all and has not been published yet, but it will be coming. Uh, I just couldn't resist it. You'll see when I release it, like, why I just had to do it. Um, but so that did take some of my sewing time as well, and I have I have no regrets about it, but I do think those are two pretty good reasons why I, uh, I didn't get through everything on my list. So let's start down this list of things that I made and what I said I was going to do and what I finished. And the first one was my aesthetic dress and my mock-up, um, which I did finish both of those, and I have a whole video about it right here. I'm super happy with these two. I love them very much. I wore them both in Prince Edward Island. In fact, I wore the blue linen one three times <laughs> because I loved it so much and it was like the best, most comfortable, uh, easy to wear thing and I didn't have to have a corset. So when we went to tea, I could just stuff myself full and it was fantastic. So those two were absolute resounding successes in my costuming that I did. The black and gold version was also great just for walking around the house and picking apples and we had a fun day just sort of meandering around the grounds, getting to wear that dress. It was really great. And I'm especially proud of these two because I had no pattern to work with and I made it all up and they're as excellent as I could have ever imagined. And they were great additions to my Prince Edward Island wardrobe because they were so casual and beachy and easy to wear. And they just ended up being everything that I hoped that they would be. So yay, check and check. The second item on my list was uh, this blue shirtwaist, which I had to make the blue skirt that I made last year. I do have a making of the blue skirt here on my channel, and I might make a making of the blue shirtwaist. I did film it, but I actually haven't looked at the footage at all, so I have no idea if it's any good or if I have enough to make a video, so we'll see. I don't know, but I did finish it, and I wore it on a lovely carriage ride. Ooh, that was so much fun. A carriage ride in Prince Edward Island by a guy who told us his name was Matthew. So it was Matthew's carriage ride, and we went past the honest-to-goodness Lake of Shining Waters, like the real one that Ellen Montgomery looked at out of her aunt and uncle's house and wrote about, so that was super cool. And then we went to this beautiful lighthouse overlooking these glorious red cliffs, and it was just 
so picturesque and that outfit was everything I wanted to be because it was flowy and casual but it was still pretty and it just was and of course the great thing about it is that it's a shirt and a skirt so while they look like they're a dress when you wear them together it's actually two separate pieces which means I can easily mix and match these with other parts of my wardrobe and I get two new outfits out of it so I I just love Edwardian separates. It's such a lovely part of costuming. Next up was supposed to be my easy project for this whole thing, which was the beaded overlay for my Edwardian evening gown. I made this dress years ago. It was already all done, and I was just gonna slap on this beaded net layer, and it was just gonna gussy it up and be really pretty, and oh my God, this sucked so bad. It was horrible. <laughs> One of my least favorite sewing things I think I've ever done. It was just terrible. I had this on my schedule to be finished by May 11th. May 11th! And I was sewing this dress up until like two days before I left for this trip, like at the beginning of September. It was awful. This netting is really hard to sew with. I couldn't just cheat and just like make a skirt to throw over it, but because of the way that this is actually cut, I had to cut out like big shapes and sew them down. I had to end up remaking the entire bodice because the style of the bodice I had before didn't work with the overlay. So that was like a whole thing of like fitting and mocking up a new Edwardian bodice. And look, I'm really happy with the results. Like, I think it's gorgeous. It was very dramatic and glorious to wear, but ugh, it was, it was a lot harder than I had realized. And frankly, I should have just worn it as a pink dress. It was still really pretty. <laughs> And I don't think it was necessarily worth the like work to thrill ratio. I mean, again, we wore our evening gowns at Dalve by the Sea, which is the hotel that was in the Anne of Green Gables movie as the White Sands Hotel. So it was really amazing to like be there in that location. We had a lovely and delicious dinner. The place was beautiful and we all looked amazing. And so, you know, it was very fun to wear this. Uh, one thing I will say is that with all this beating, it is so heavy. It weighs a ton. Not only was it absolutely exhausting to wear because just dragging this around, it was already heavy before with the amount of silk satin that's in it and there's like a lot of structure underneath, but then just adding all this beading was like, ugh, ugh. oh my God. I literally needed somebody to walk behind me and like carry my train for me. But it also ended up being so heavy. It also ended up being so heavy that I had to finish the skirt early and give it to Jenny Rose to drive up because it weighs so much that like it would have like like gone over the weight limit on my suitcase so if this is a special princess she looks beautiful as decoration on my dress form I would say if you're going to do a beaded overlay like this just don't tell yourself it's going to be easy because it's horrible to sew with netting it's heavy takes a lot of finishing it's very fiddly I this is, this is not my kind of sewing. Let's get back to more aesthetic dresses with like two seams in them. That, that was great. You're very lucky you're pretty. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Anyway, so I did finish that one. Check that one off the list. I'm being overdramatic. This actually didn't really take that long to sew, but it was just so annoying and frustrating that I could like do like one hour of it at a time before I was like mad and had to throw it on the floor. So it, this is a lot of my personal delay with being annoyed by sewing with this fabric, but you know, okay. Anyway, but that's enough from you. Let's move on, shall we? To the last thing that I made. <laughs> All right, the last thing that I made was this ruffly robe, which I actually got zero video of, none, and almost no pictures of, and I don't know why. We were just having fun and wearing them around, and I just kind of forgot that I was supposed to be filming stuff for a YouTube video. I, I don't know. I can't explain it, but it is really cute and I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. I made this like mega quickly in about three days um, and I used, I kind of like butchered a uh, old vintage Vogue pattern um, and I just sort of added some fullness in places and changed the way the center front closed and just kind of threw it together. I didn't even really do a mock-up on it, um, but I'm actually really happy with it. So this was kind of my oh crap, can I get this finished before we leave project? And uh, and I did, <laughs> and I got to wear it. So that was really nice. And I do know this is something that I'll use for lots of future things because having loungewear, I just, it gets used constantly. It's, it's really nice to have on these little getaways and vacationy things that we do. And that is the end of new things that I made for this trip. So going by my list, what I did not finish was uh, a separate dressing gown. 
I wanted to make something that was sort of kimono-y, um, which I, I didn't get to. Uh, I was going to make a new skirt. Nope. I was going to make a new dress. No. I was going to make another shirtwaist. No. I was going to make a bathing costume. A stretch goal? Like, what was I thinking? Ugh. And then I had all these little accessories that I was going to make, like a yellow belt and a blue belt and two hats and a big reticule and, uh, you know, just little things like that. No. None of that. I did get a yellow belt cut out and pinned together and I brought it with me to sew on while we were in PEI, but I didn't actually sew anything while we were there. So I will finish that eventually. But no, it's autumn, so who needs a soft yellow belt? So we'll revisit that in the springtime. It's there when I'm ready for it. Even though that's the end of my new things, I did wear other stuff while I was in PEI. The first thing is I did wear my white sands dress again. This is like the centerpiece of the whole trip. Like we knew that we all wanted to make these fluffy dresses that we called white sands after the white sands hotel in Anne of Green Gables, where Anne and Diana wear their fluffy white dresses to the poetry reading. And we just loved that whole aesthetic. So we did that. We actually booked a professional photographer for this, which was a fantastic experience. And she was just able to capture everything we had in our head with the vision of us being together and walking on the red sand beaches of PEI in the sunset. It was great. Um, the White Sands dress is one I made in 2020. I have a three-part video series about making it on my channel. So that's kind of a this old thing dress, but it's still one of my favorite things I've ever made and I just love wearing it. So it was nice to actually wear that for the purpose that it was made like 200 years ago now. So that was good. I also wore a fully new outfit that consisted of an antique skirt that I found at an antique store that is in spectacular condition and fits me perfectly. Like, I can't believe that even happened. Paired with my antique boater hat, also an antique store find. And then Meg um, from Nutmeg Sews knitted me a uh, Edwardian cycling sweater. So that was really, really fun. She has a new knitting machine that she's been testing patterns out on and I got to have one of them. So that was really fun. And it was really fun for us to wear these together. We just had a great time with them. So that was one full outfit that I didn't have to sew a stitch on, which was terrific. And it looked super cute. And I got to wear my new um, American Duchess boots, which I'm obsessed with. So that was just a, a great fun outfit. I also wore some more of my loungewear just around the house, including a robe that Jenny Rose made several years ago that's very dramatic and fun. And I wore my Wearing History red morning jacket which was really great to like have tea in and walk around in. And I have a video about making that one from 2020 as well. And that was a really fun accessory. It felt very like on brand with our lovely uh, 1900s farmhouse. So that was really fun to wear. Oh, and I did complete one mini project, but I'm not sure it actually counts. And that is that I made this new hat, which is super cute, but it's all just pinned together. There's literally not a stitch sewn on it. I just sat down one day and I brought some uh, ribbons and flowers and lace with me and I just crammed it all onto the hat and I pinned it all together and that became the hat that I wore there. So um, I guess that sort of counts. I mean it's cute. It's still put together like I just hung it on my wall and I got home. It's just that it's only being held together by pins and that way I can reuse the fabric and the ribbon and the flowers if I ever want to when I get tired of it. And that's actually how I make a lot of my hats so I should check that off my list because I did finish it and I did wear it. so. That was good. And I'll go ahead and answer a question that I imagine a lot of you are asking, which is how in the world do we pack for this? All those things I just talked about. I did already sort of spoil it a little bit. On this trip, Jenny Rose drove up from Virginia, so she actually took a lot of my costumes in the car with her, so I didn't have to worry about packing them. But I do have a video about packing for Carnival a few years ago, so you can watch that here if you're curious about how I actually do manage to pack for these big costuming trips that we do, where I have to fly and I have to be careful about my suitcases and things like that. Well, the trip is over. It was awesome. I certainly did not meet everything on my goal list, but I was very happy with what I wore while I was there, and I was happy with how everything turned out that I did make, and I'm really happy that I can take a break from Edwardian sewing for a while because I've been doing a lot of it. And don't get me wrong, I love Edwardian clothing, I love the Edwardian era, but it'll be nice to not have the pressure to sew for that period anymore. So I think I'm going to do something 18th century next. That sounds really fun and refreshing. <laughs> All right. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful. I told you I would be accountable. I am accountable. So there you go. I had a very ambitious plan with what I wanted to get done. As expected. I think you'll remember from that video. I was sure that I was not going to complete everything. But I did have enough to wear lots of clothes in PEI. I was very happy with our wardrobes and we had a wonderful time. Let me know in the comments what your favorite outfit was that I had because I'm, I'm curious to know. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.